Setting up and organizing a classroom makerspace is half the battle. The second half is managing the supplies and making sure that students can be independent when using it in their work. I'm going to be sharing with you my management hacks that have been a game changer in my own K-5 STEM classroom, and it actually makes managing your makerspace a lot of fun. Yes, the kids are very excited to build, but this system is so much fun and the kids get even more excited about this part of the makerspace unit. Can't wait to share all these tips with you in this episode. Are you tired of running out of makerspace supplies after one lesson with a class? Are you wanting kids to be independent with their supplies but not sure how? And how can you add more of an element of math when implementing makerspace supplies? I totally get it. It can be a lot to manage with a small class of 25 or even all the kids in the school. But you want to know my secret? It is having a makerspace menu and money system. In this episode, I'm going to break down all the steps for what you need to do before the lesson during the lesson when using the makerspace menu and money, and after the lesson. This will really answer all of those questions, and again, it is so much fun, and you're really going to love it. You'll need to do before teaching a makerspace lesson and a little bit of prep work before diving in. If you haven't already, make sure to go listen to episode five where we talk about how you can organize your makerspace and gather materials for your space so that you are ready to go. So that is a big part of this is making sure that you have enough materials. Now, when you're asking for donations, a big thing that I like to ask for is grocery bags. Now, you might have a ton already at home, but this is going to make shopping for supplies a lot easier. Also, when in between classes, students are going to keep their supplies in these grocery bags along with their money, their plan, and little small things that they have built. It's all going to go in that grocery bag, and the grocery bags are going to go inside a big class box. I like to use the IKEA fabric boxes. Those are going to go in that box and ready to go. So the next time they come into your room, you just pull out the box and everything will be right there for them. Of course, you're setting this up based on a lesson that you want to teach that will use the makerspace. I don't use this system for every single lesson. In fact, my first makerspace lesson, STEM Survival Camp, which is in episode four, I don't use the money system at all. I actually will only pull out the supplies that they need. So this is something that you probably want to work up to. It will take some trial and error as you get started. But again, you're setting this system up for success so you can use it for multiple grades and multiple times throughout the year. When you're first setting up this system, again, before the lesson even starts, so about a week or month before, depending on the time that you have, you want to print out all of the money and have those different denominations that you want students to use. Now, our money is all green in real life, but I like to print out the makerspace money, the different denominations in different colors. It's really helpful having those visual cues when students are counting things out and When I'm counting things with them, we can easily see which money is what. So it's almost like having Monopoly money in your room, but it's your makerspace money, and they know for sure it's fake, so it adds to the excitement as well. Once I have printed and cut out all the money, I like to store all of the money in my bank, which is just those simple little photo boxes that you can get at Michael's or Amazon. Just those little colorful boxes. I have three, one for the $1 bills, the five, and the tens. I pull those out when I'm ready, and then I lock them up when I'm done. So just an easy way to have a bank account. I also would really love to have one of those waitressing aprons. I still haven't bought one, but that would be really helpful as well. You have your bank and then you're walking around the classroom. Students might pay you on the go. So having a little apron could be helpful as well. Next, decide on a budget you want students to have when they are designing their project. I keep my budgets around $25 to $35 for a project. Now the budget is for one project. So if a student is working by themselves, they will have $25 by themselves. If they're working in a group of two or three, they have to share the $25. So make that very clear with kids. That's a little bit confusing at first. But think about the budgets that you want to make. 
I like to pre-make their little wallets. Now again, nothing fancy. Just grab those little snack size Ziploc bags, make the wallets. You could have an older student help you create these wallets of money as well. Because if you have these wallets set up, this is actually going to help you the week of starting this makerspace project and you're not scrambling putting together money for them. Also in this setup project, edit your makerspace menu based on the materials that you have and you want students to use. For certain projects, some kids actually might have specialty items. So I've had, for a first grade project, they needed to have glow sticks to show their bioluminescent animals. But I didn't want any other grades to shop for those things. So on your menu, you can have all of the regular items that all kids can shop from. And then at the bottom, you could have a section that talks about specialty items that only certain grade levels can buy. This is really important, too, because if you are planning your lessons with the standards, there are specific things that their projects might need to do. And those specialty items are things that they need to purchase. Specialty items I actually won't put in the regular maker space. That might be a bin that I will pull out separately because they are special. Make sure you organize your supplies that way. Now you are ready for the fun part. How are you going to use this system with the makerspace money and menu during the week of? This is the juiciest fun part, and trust me, you're going to love this so much. Of course, you have your project in mind, and you're going to introduce the project to the students, and just like you've always done, and we'll talk more about planning in other episodes, but have students build background about the topic. So they're researching using different mediums, epic books, podcasts, videos, pictures, real books that you have. You're building that background about what is the problem they're trying to solve. Next, they're going to plan. Now, before I have students even start planning their design, this is where I will introduce the Makerspace menu. Even if we have used the Makerspace menu before, we will go over it again just to make sure we're clear on how to use it. So I will talk to them about their budget, what supplies are on the menu, where supplies are located, what items are free, which items are not. There, yes, there are free items like paper, glue sticks, crayons, markers, things that kind of help them cut and design. So we'll talk about where everything is in the classroom so they know how to use it, and then they will ask any questions. Now, part of that planning process is not only are they drawing a thoughtful plan by drawing and labeling their design, the other part of their plan is they need to create their shopping list. Now, this will really help students think about how they want their project to look based on the amount of money they get to spend. So having these both at the same time is really important. I will have the same process also for all of my kids. I usually start this in second grade. So second through fifth grade, we'll use this system. And then I'll use a modified system for first and kindergarten. So students will thoughtfully plan their design. They will create their shopping list. So they have to write out all the items they would like to buy, how much of each item, and how much it's going to cost. Then on their paper, they're going to total up all of those amounts and then write down how much money they might have left over. Once they have their thoughtful plan and their shopping list with all of those things included, they have to show those to me. Now, there might be a little bit of a wait. You might have a better way of doing this, but this has worked well for me to make sure that there's some checks and balances in the system and kids aren't just rushing into my makerspace and taking things out. Students will show me those things. I'll give them some feedback if they're missing things or not. I won't always check their math right away because once they come back with their supplies, we'll actually add up things together. So don't worry too much about the math. You can, but you're going to have another time. You're going to check what they're adding up anyway and even do more mental math with them. So once they're good to go, say, yep, you have a great plan. Yes, you have the money. Here is your shopping bag. And students will actually go into my makerspace. Everything's at kid height and labeled with pictures and words. They'll go into the makerspace and they will shop for all of their supplies. They'll put everything in their shopping bags and grab what they need. Then once they're done shopping, they will come back in line. They might have to wait their turn and we talk about that's how real stores work. 
you might have to wait your turn. We don't come and put things in my face. So once they wait their turn, we are, I'll take everything out of their bag and I have the makerspace menu up on the TV. So it's great of having the same menu second through fifth. You will start memorizing the prices and there won't really be a question of how much it is. So that's really helpful as well. So I'll take everything out of their bags and then I will start saying the totals like, okay, you have two plates and a ball. So five plus three and I have them answer me. Um, so we're working on a little bit of those fast facts and mental math. Once they have added that up with me, because their shopping list might change, which that's how real life goes, then they'll count out their money and then give that to me. I'll put it in the cash register. They can always come back and shop for more if they need or even make returns, um, but then they're ready to go. While students are shopping, there even might be some kids who are still working on their plan, and that is okay. This whole system really differentiates itself and helps kids be independent and work on what, they're, what they need. So it's really fun having this whole system in your classroom where they feel like they're in charge of their project. I am checking in with all of them, seeing and their designs and talking about it, which is really exciting. So the shopping part will take place the end of day two. So let's say you have five days for this project. This will happen at the end of day two and really day three is the biggest shopping day. Day four and five, kids might be returning a few things here and there. Some kids might be purchasing a couple of things like, hey, here's a straw and they'll give me a dollar. That's why having a little apron would be amazing. But there's this whole flow in the classroom. It's super exciting and energetic. And the kids are really in charge as you get going with this project. And you're not managing so much of here, here's this for you. Let me cut this. They're really in charge of this whole project. Kids always ask this question about returns. Can I return something? I say yes, as long as the item can be reused. If they bought a straw and it has only been bent a little, yes, that can be reused. But if they bought a straw and cut it up into tiny pieces, no, I'm not going to give you your money back. I also don't let them get their money back for tape, hot glue gun use, unless they really didn't use it. If, even if they use a little bit, I don't give them their money back. But most things, yes, they can have their money back. Now, tape and hot glue are really expensive items that they can purchase. Um, they can have the option of buying a little bit of tape for $5, or um, I don't think they actually can buy a little bit of hot glue gun. <laughs> um, they can buy a little bit of tape for $5, and then they can buy unlimited use of tape for $10, unlimited use of the hot glue gun for $10. That's about half of their budget. So kids are so funny. Some will not want to spend anything and only use free items. Nothing happens if they do or don't spend their money. I could have an incentive and some kids just spend it all right away. What's really awesome too about this process is when kids are in that planning stage and as they're building and they want more things, they start bringing stuff from home. I don't ask them to bring things from home they don't have to. I have plenty of that unless there's, again, grocery bags. I need more of those. But some kids will even think about how they can use the breakfast trash. I had some girls who really wanted a specific size bucket for their design. They had cereal that day for breakfast. So they rinsed out their cereal bowl at the end of breakfast at school and they brought it into class. So even getting creative with the trash and recyclables that they're using already. On the last day of the lesson, make sure you leave enough time for kids to clean up all of their materials. That is part of taking care of the space and the whole process of the makerspace menu. So give them about 10 minutes where they'll put back any supplies that they didn't use. They'll return any of the money they didn't use, any projects that they don't want to keep, they can even take those apart and put back items that can be reused. Sometimes kids will, like I said, bring things from home and they'll let me keep the rest, which is awesome because then I'm restocked for the next group of kids. So this really needs to be added into the system. Don't say, okay, good job. You're done. Bye. And your room's a disaster. This is part of the STEM experience you do need to clean up. I say, I don't care if you make a mess, but I care if you don't clean it up. So that's just a whole part of this makerspace experience. Now, I know this sounds like a lot, so I wanted to make this setup even easier for you. I have made you a makerspace bundle for getting started that comes with the makerspace menu and money that I just shared with you about. 
180 plus supply labels with words, pictures, and different colors to match your classroom theme, an editable donation letter, anchor charts, and getting started lessons. This will all be linked in the show notes, or you can grab it using this link, naomimeredith.com slash TPT Makerspace Bundle. Thank you so much for joining me today. I can't wait to hear how this system works out in your classroom.